Um, and, and it's the biggest gap in every center that I go into that struggles. So why is that? What is causing that? I almost want to call it a leadership vacuum. I mean, obviously there's leaders in place, but there's just that gap, like you said. What, what are you seeing or what have you historically found is the trigger for that or the cause? It's always the same thing. Uh, you know, somebody's successful on the phones and a leadership position opens and they move that person who's a successful salesperson up to a leadership position, right? I mean, it's the same thing that happens every single time. But then it's, there's nothing afterwards. Um, and I love the, the term vacuum because it's exactly what happens is they get put in this black hole of, here you go, go lead. And they get no tools, no training, no resources, nothing um, to, to really help them. Just because you can sell doesn't mean, you know, you can actually teach and motivate and lead a team. Um, so that's the number one reason. I mean, it's not tools, it's not anything else. It's it's the, the skill sets and the training to become a positive leader for the people that they're, they're now in charge of. And so going one level deeper, why is it that you think organizations do that? They promote somebody, they say, hey, you're great at sales. Uh, now get this team to be successful just like you. And they leave them at that. Why, why does that happen? Mm. In our industry, um, there's typically a lack of focus on training period anyways and development. Um, and I, I think it's a core fundamental problem. Um, and also historically, now this is changing, um, but historically, we haven't done a good job in our industry of building positive culture that encourages growth. Um, you know, we... When you look at the, the history of contact centers, we were a cost center in everybody's eyes for the past, uh, you know, up until probably 10-ish years ago. And I think we talked about this on, on the other podcast a little bit about the, the history of um, actually this industry starting to get exciting uh, over the last 10 years and really, especially the last five, um, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, we investment in the contact center uh in the the sales end it didn't matter if it was sales um you know biz dev type of lead gen or um you yeah, know or customer service quite frankly um you know we just as an industry didn't invest in training and development well um didn't build good cultures to promote uh that type of advancement and didn't didn't get people, um, you know, and build programs around the idea that sure you can start out as an agent, but if you want to grow, here's your path. Um, we don't do well at those things. Uh, we're just not good at it. It's interesting when you talk about cost center because that takes me back. Year was 2000. It was between 2000 and 2002. I had my first real job, air quotes. Uh, I went from the restaurant business to working as a contractor at Microsoft doing tech support. So not a, con a Microsoft employee, but a outsourced, you know, but on site, like, you know, filling up their cubes. And uh, the training I thought was amazing because it yeah. was two weeks of training. It was product training. We were learning all the products that we had to support. Uh, at a certain level and just being familiar with it. But then we jumped into the cubes and took calls. And then that was basically the extent of the training and the supervising and the helping and anything. Um, and the cost center part that always makes me laugh is we're talking 2000, right? So it's a long time ago. It's not that long ago. But in that environment, because tech support was viewed as a cost center, we had all the remnants and leftovers. Like I had two mismatched monitors that were like 11 inches. I had a keyboard that was missing keys, like the mouse mostly worked. When somebody would get fired, like you'd go scavenge their desk to try to get something slightly better. Um, you know, weird chairs, like we were just treated like a cost center. And it's interesting to see that and then reflect on what you're saying where if an organization is treating any of it, even sales, like, okay, you're a cost center, generate sales, but still we're just gonna try to run it as lean as we can. They're yeah. not putting any of that effort into it. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I mean, the human development piece is something, you know, it, it's constant. You, you have to invest in it and you have to invest in it forever, right? I mean, you know, natural attrition and what we do in sales, especially in contact centers, um, natural attrition is always gonna be a problem. 
So investing in those people, it goes back to the old adage. I always loved it. Uh, the CFO comes to the CEO and says, um, you know, what if we invest all this money and they leave? And the CEO says, well, what if we don't and they stay? Um, yeah. You know, that's the challenge is overcoming that mentality of, you know, hey, we're just a cost center. I mean, we got to keep our costs as low as possible to drive the best profitability, you know, and not invest in our people. That day and age is gone. I mean, you look at yeah, the demographics yeah. of the, the Gen Zers, um, you know, and, and what they're going to accept, uh, you know, from a, a company that's hiring them. I mean, you know, the, if you don't create some kind of culture that gets people excited to come to work, um, you know, people our age aren't going to go sit in a call center seat, um, you know, generally speaking, uh, and, and make outbound sales. Um, not unless you pay them really well, right? Or you give them a culture and you give them learning and development and a growth path and invest in them. And I think that's the dynamic that we're running into right now in our country um, is we in the contact center space historically not been great at that.